Uh, hello, uh, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation in Seattle with a short video on how to load the high resolution rapid refresh model data from Oceans. It's in grid format from Oceans WeatherNet into uh, Expedition. And let me first show you where you just learn about that. H go to Google HRRR, enter and their high resolution rapid refresh and here is a place where you can learn about that model um, it is uh, three kilometers it has a 15 hour forecast it is updated every hour with full assimilation of all of the local buoy winds radar uh, radar all all information available so they get a fresh forecast every hour for 15 hours and so we'll start here. Here's Expedition. Let's first look. We're going to open up uh, Oceans, uh, Oceans Weather Net here. And that is a, a commercial product that one has to own to supplement this. And then um, let's look where we want to put these files. So if we go up here, we can go directly to the Expedition data folder which is here and where they want to go is in this folder called GRIB right here. Now if you have a very first install or running of the expedition and you look in this uh, folder you won't find this for but uh, it won't be there so if I just delete it it's, you see that's what you'd see. Then the thing to do is just go up here and run sail docs this is one way to get that repopulated, uh, just get a grip file from sail docs, which is uh, right there's one. Uh, now this is the GFS data. And now if we go back and look into this folder, there sits the folder and there's the one we just downloaded. So that's the place, um, that's the place we want to put the data. Now, so we open up Oceans, uh, Oceans Weather Net. It might default, if you haven't used it before, it'll default to this uh, version here, uh, this, this display. And then we want to switch to what's called the library view, which is here. Oceans, by the way, has a, I think it's a three-day free uh, demo period that you can use that this program and access this data to test it for your local region. This data is available for US all of US waters. So its main interest would be for coastal and inland inland waters uh, because it's high resolution updated frequently. So this is a display you would see. I already have a green mark here. You have to have a green check mark in this batch. And this is, and you can make a custom batch with this button here, new batch, and then you'll get this here. And I've already populated this, which I'll show in a moment. But then right-click this batch and hit properties. Then under properties, here is the name of the batch. Some notes for yourself that show up over here. You may want a batch with just six hours of data or something like that. And then here is where it has to go, and you can get there just by. Uh, clicking the browse button and go straight to this file which we we found in the other place. In this section it tells with this weather net what to do after you get a file. I would just put don't run an application and uh, don't run anything else here. It actually will be defaulted to some other things because uh, Oceans has a very nice uh, a uh, grib viewer of their own called uh, grib explorer but for now we're using uh, expedition and then down here there's nothing here um, and nothing here and now but this is a valuable button here this is uh, because look the way the data is set up it's uh, 15 hours of data but the way it's set up at oceans you can only get three hours at a time so you get three uh, one two three hour four five six seven eight nine so forth so five data five uh, files to get 15 hours of pressure and five files to get 15 hours of wind uh, i think maybe or hopefully they'll change that later um, it's high resolution they could be large files but for this type of data we don't need a very we need a very small region so I don't think we run the risk of ever getting too big of files but the idea is to you, this this is a functionality here a nice one which you put a check mark there it'll combine all these into one file 
and you can then rename that. Now that file should, of course, well, I, I would guess, go to the same place you're putting everything else. That's that GFS we were looking at in the Expedition Grip folder. But the point I would make here is be sure to give that file that you're adding all those together in a, a unique name, and then you will have to rename it every time you run the file again. Uh, Ocean's uh, program will compile these and push those off into a folder every time you run a new one, but it will leave that file there with the same name and overwrite it. So it's nice to put a, a unique name every time. And I'm running this at, uh, well, it's actually now 1729, and I'll just name it like that, 1729, and we've got it, and I save that. Um, um, so um, here we go. That's all okay, I think. Um, and, all right, now, so the key point here is where do you get these files from this uh, archive of very many sources of data? The answer is GribMet and Grib Meteorology or uh, GribMet, whatever. And then uh, under Wrap for Rapid Refresh Model, I suppose. The, the high resolution rapid refresh is a subset of what's called the. the rapid refresh model. And here's the wind. And then uh, just be a little bit careful here with the uh, with this uh, dis with this display because if you just looked at the top it says a uh, uh, rapid refresh high resolution. We d and that's a kind of a hangover from some earlier data they have. But here we want very high resolution. So you just click one of these and just drag it down here and it's there already and you know click you have to do them one at a time they're all there so you put in all the winds all the five wind files there then go up to the pressure and here they just have the very high resolution so you grab those and put those in there those are all there so then you have your files all built you have a check mark a check mark in each one of these you can uh, you can right click and uh, delete checked unchecked whatever. So you want all check marks in this. You want a green check mark here, and then we're done. Then you hit uh, start to transfer. Now, here's where you go and select the area. Uh, I, don't, I don't think this is transferred from Expedition. I'm not sure, but you, d it, you check it anyway. You, here you map, and there's where you set the region. You can just uh, zoom out and you know, put this if you wherever you want, San Francisco Bay or whatever. Just draw it like that. Uh, but I want just this region right up here. Uh, I can, I know I can get that in about three degrees. Actually, I can get a little smaller than that. I don't have good light here. Three degrees. So I've got 160 miles square here, and say OK. So I've got that. So that's the map. And now I'm go. I'm ready to transfer it. Note that uh, this is a uh, that that download was 150 kilobytes, and the, the charge for that one that group of six file uh, ten files was uh, three dollars, and so that's all done. And I think we're done. So that in principle it says all done and okay. I can close that. I can minimize that, and then uh, the job would be go in here to the weather. Just for the reference here, look at what we got from the, this is point, I think I did a 0.25 degrees uh, uh, GFS. That's what that looks like. That's the best from the GFS. Um, best we have readily, ready, uh, good access to. Anyway, so then here's whatever that was looking at previously. I'm going to clear all and then add a file. Now, what did we get here? And sure enough, we got what we want. There's the original, I'm in the data gri expedition grib file. That's the GFS we looked at originally. Um, and these are the 10 individual files. And this is the one uh, that's a summary, one, one megabyte sum of all of them. So I can just check that one and say open. And I guess I'm okay. So now we can go in here. Uh, oh, I didn't change the uh, settings. Uh, weather, uh, wind. I'm sorry, I should have made this. Uh, thought I'd fix that. Okay.
So there you can see the winds. Um, and let me zoom out just a little bit. But this is now this is now this data, and you can step through it hour by hour like that. And these are now oh that change I don't know I changed that I must have changed that. And but dear high resolution now so we're going to want to look at these at least one maybe you might even want a half if you got an accurate barometer. Then uh, there's one millibar. Um, I didn't change it. Mean sea level pressure. Oh, that's a line width. Keep that at two. Change that to one. Say OK. All right, so there's the isobars, and then you can step through and look at that for 15 hours or back to the beginning. And you'll see that that's pretty nice uh, wind, wind, wind data in local waters here. And uh, I always like this beautiful feature of the expedition, the meteogram. So you can just push your button here and look at the how the wind's changing there over these 15 hours at that point or you know maybe here look at the meteogram and you see the wind uh, shifting there very often you'll spot you know something happening well here's obviously getting lighter but you can spot things very quickly that way just with that picture and so that's the that is the procedure uh, that I wanted to show here